Hey, what's going on? Your boy BQ here, and I'm going to be doing things a little bit different this week in the sake of time. So this is the B-Side Podcast. Typically, I deliver this to you in podcast format, but I'm pressed for time. I've been pressed for time all week, all fucking week, and um, I still wanted to get this podcast out. I did record a full podcast, but by the time I got around to editing it, which was this morning... Too much of what I said was out of date. So normally I do have various talking points for impact, but with this episode right now this week, I'm going to push some of that off to next week and I'm just going to get into my Bound for Glory review and I'm going to do that in video format while drinking my morning cup of coffee. If it's your first time stumbling across the Impact Lounge YouTube channel, I do try to make this the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan and statistically it is. But there's a lot of improvement I can do here on the channel. So if you want to take the ride with me, and I've got lots of great ideas up in here that I still got to you know, put into action. But if you want to take the ride with me and it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button. If you're excited for Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. As I told you, I have various talking points that I usually kick off the podcast with. But you're getting me in video format today. And for the sake of video editing, I'm just going to try to keep it... At Bound for Glory, it's this Sunday. Now, the disappointing part is that I do have three tickets for Bound for Glory, and they're good tickets, too. I will 99% uh, not be able to attend the show. So, uh, spent the money on the tickets. I'm, I'm most likely not going to be able to use them. I know there was a lot of viewers that I was going to meet, and, and of course, uh, I was excited about the show. Um, every year, you know, my birthday's in October. Every year I go to some kind of rest, big wrestling show to celebrate my birthday. So, uh, you know, Bound for Glory this year was, you know, the show. I was going to do that, but um, I unfortunately had military duty this weekend. And even though I requested the weekend off two months ago, um, if you've never dealt with the military, served in the military, it's the most unorganized organization on the planet. I know that I, there's probably a... Uh, you know, assumption that that's, you know, it's the opposite, but it is. And even though I, um, I, I got the vacation from my civilian job, uh, the military did not grant it to me or actually did not even give me an answer. But because we're, we're so close now to the day it's happening, uh, I do have to report for my reserve duty and uh, Murphy's Law. You know what I mean? I, uh, I bought the tickets for Bound for Glory, assuming that I was not going to do military later, duty later in the month because we never do. It's always one of the first two weekends of the month. So, um, that being said, I'm most likely going to be watching with you guys at home on pay-per-view. So I'm going to keep this largely positive. I've been very critical about the build for Bound for Glory. I've been very critical about the promotion, the marketing, and I am going to put my money where my mouth is. I do. I am working on a series of videos how I would fix Impact Wrestling's marketing. Um, and I'm not speaking from the standpoint of a uh, an expert, but I'm speaking from a standpoint with someone who does know what he's talking about, what he's doing. And I can't sit here and have a YouTube channel where I critique these things for multiple years and not have a solution, right? So I'm coming up with realistic solutions. Nothing, nothing is gonna be, you know, sign the rock. Nothing like that, very realistic. Uh, solutions to social media, to YouTube, and to the Impact Plus and Twitch shows. So look out for that in the future. But I'm going to keep this review, or preview I should say, of Bound for Glory largely positive because as I've also said, I think it's going to be a really good show. The build, that's a different ball game, but the actual matches that are put together, as random as they may seem, you know, they should deliver for the most part. Let's talk about the X Division ladder match. This is probably the one I'm going to start off on my soapbox here with a little bit of negativity, but I'll try to cool it down. You know, I said not too long ago that if Tessa beat OVE again, I would be done. I'd, I'd be done YouTubing, you know, and it doesn't mean uh, that I don't like Tessa because I do. I hope that she's a cornerstone of the company for years to come. I don't think she will be, but I, I hope that she is. But she beat OVE again. I'm be fumbled. Be fucking fumbled. Um, OVE is a team that, you know, they're, they're a team. They were a team put together. This is a stable. And she's been able to use random tag team partners from ECW, Daga, P 
people on TV that she's never tagged with and and beat them every single week. And she's beaten Dave, uh, not Dave Chris. So she beat Dave Chris. She's beaten Jake Chris four times. Once by tap out, and then she's pinned him three other times. And whether it's tag team singles, um, I think it's really, uh, really weak to make the X Division champion look like that. And the X Division champion ship, I thought was really built up with Matt Seidel and then Brian Cage. I thought Matt Seidel was the one that really turned the corner. I don't think it was Sanjay and Loki and all that shit. They were trying to do a global force. I thought, I, you know, obviously, and definitely not Trevor Lee. I thought Matt Seidel was the guy that started making the title relevant again. And then Brian Cage, obviously. Rich Swan was an excellent champion. And then you get Dave Chris, who was... Uh, Jake Chris, I'm sorry, I always do that. You get Jake Chris, who is supposed to be the next breed of X Division champion, because he's a tag team wrestler. So you think we're just... We're, we're seeing, a, a, you know, a different direction for the X Division. And um, it hasn't been a good reign at all. And he loses the Tessa every week. And uh, I, as a viewer, have a problem with that. Now, if it's one or two ladders, and, you know, if you're looking back at, like, the Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels match, you know what I mean, where you use the ladder in the match, but you weren't setting up a bunch of, you know, four, five, six ladders to do spots. Like, that's what I have an issue with. But uh, I think the field is, is fun. Um, a dog is not going to win. Uh, Rohit or Sabu, they're, they're not going to win. Um, so it's going to be between Ace Austin and, you know, if they can figure out a way to, if they're going to further that storyline with Eddie with the use of the X Division Championship, or I think, um, you know, maybe Alicia gets attracted to the X Division Championship, you know? So there's a way to do it with Ace. Uh, obviously, Jake Chris retaining as a possibility, but it's hard to see it in the way he's been losing, but maybe he's been doing all that losing just to win at the pay per view, which is the old um, WWE model for a champion drop a bunch of non title matches and win at the pay per view. Or Tessa could be the champ. I am going to go with uh, J, J. Chris retaining, though. This wasn't what I said before. Before, I was like, I was like, hey, Tessa is winning this thing. There's no fucking way he's, this dude's losing again. No way. So I got J. Chris retaining. Call your shot, Gauntlet. You know, I, I had said previously, hey, build something towards this match. You know, announce one competitor a day for 10 days. You know, have to feel something. All they did was announce the match. Uh, no hype behind it. Hype, no hype around it. They haven't hyped it up on Impact, anything like that. Um, it should be our Money in the Bank. It should be our Royal Rumble. But my my gut, because they have um, Joe Madden possibly being there. Who's he's in, here's the thing with Joe Madden. He's in the news right now. Outside of the World Series, he's he's the highest searched whatever, because he um, is now going to be the skipper for my hometown Angels. So this is actually a good time to get him on board because he's popular in Chicago and he's in the news. So, But the fact that he is on board with this tells me that this most likely doesn't mean anything. But if I had to pick a winner, even though I don't know the field, I'm going to assume Eddie Edwards wins this thing because he doesn't have a match otherwise. And this, this I think this happened at Slammiversary to him too. Uh, whatever pay-per-view, was it Rebellion? That he was supposed to work with Eli Drake and ended up doing nothing, and then he was in a multi-man match and lost. That's not going to happen again. And Eddie, with the exception, I literally liked his you know Slam Reversary match with Davey and Angelina and Alicia. But after that, I don't think he's been in, involved with any good pay-per-view matches, except for you no, know, I should say the match with Killer Cross was excellent. But in the last couple of years, the match he's been involved with has always been my the one I enjoyed the least at the pay-per-view not because of him because he's like my top two favorite in impact but just just the match so i have to believe eddie edwards is in this thing and win rascal's taking on dr wagner aerostar and who's their partner it's the problem when i'm not editing and taurus um this match is going to be it's going to mean absolutely nothing it's going to be a, a, a you know it's going to be a spot fest but but not one that i'm like oh this is so spotty i think it's going to start off the show I think it's gonna be fun, entertaining. There's gonna be lots of dives and flips. The when I say it means nothing, the, the result is gonna mean absolutely nothing. But you know, it, it's the further the partnership with AAA. Uh, Rascals haven't been on TV. They haven't been winning on TV, so it's very weird, weird build up to this. But and I know I wish they would have announced this instead of doing mystery partners. I wish they would just announced it in Mexico. So you know maybe we could have seen Aerostar wrestle. They made it look like Golden Magic was going to be a big feature, and he, he's not there. You know it's Taurus, 
maybe maybe they just didn't know who it was gonna be. You know what I mean? Maybe they had to wait it out. Something was going on backstage, so they had to wait. So I don't know. Um, the match will be a good match. It'll be a fun match. I don't necessarily care about who wins or loses. The Rascals had what I thought was one of the top matches on Impact when they took on the North and almost won the titles, and then they kind of went, you know, what have they been doing with them? I don't expect them to win this match. I think um, Impact was going to want to further the relationship with Triple A, so I think the Triple A guys are going to win. Tag, let's talk tag team title match real quick. I had predicted it was going to be Rich Swan and Willie Mack against the North. They ended up throwing RVD and Rhino in there. I'm not a big fan of multi-man matches, multi-team matches, anything like that. I really like more traditional wrestling. I think the better match would have been uh, Swan and Mack against the North. Uh, but obviously, you know, they feel that Rhino and RVD are two of the bigger stars. They probably pay him a, you know, probably have a pretty good payday being a part of Impact. And it is bound for glory, so I can see why they're included. You know, the way they did it beating the North in a non-title match, I would have... I'm not a big fan of champions losing non-title matches, so, you know, I wish there was a different way they could have done it. I think the match would have been better 2-on-2, two -two, but we got three, three teams here. Fully expect the North to win this thing, because here's the thing. Now that LAX is gone and they're still trying to figure... They're building some of these other teams up. But since they're trying to figure out the tag team division, you have to have a staple. You have to have that team that's that's locked in and who you're going to run with. And the North is, is perfect for that. I think Rich Swan and Willie Mack will eventually take the titles off the North. I'm not real big on Rich, Rich Swan's new little comedy-ish character. I, I don't care for that at all. But he's one of my favorite wrestlers on the comp in the company. And I do think those two will eventually take the titles from them. But the North is most likely going to have a very long title reign. Marafuji, Michael Elgin, I really wish they could go back here and, and find a way to get Marafuji involved in the show, whether it's video packages or whatever. I've met Marafuji, fairly, fairly certain he doesn't speak much English, so obviously he can't cut promos, but you know they worked around it with Pentagon, so I wish there was something they could have done to build a hype a little bit, but Michael Elgin has been looking excellent on TV. Uh, he had a great match with TJP. He's most likely going to beat Fala Bot tonight. He's been looking fucking great. I love everything Michael Elgin's doing. Um, but as far as a winner of this match, um, it's a tough one because you want to, you know, you want to further the relationship with Pro Wrestling Noah. But um, I, I initially said Michael Elgin was going to win this match. I'm actually going to go with Marafuji winning the match because I assume he'll stick around for the set of tapings. Uh, and they're not going to keep him on as a, as a loser. Um, and I'll get into why a little bit later. But... I am flip-flopping on this one. I'm going to go with Marafuji. And this is this is one of the matches I cannot fucking wait to see. No build, no nothing, no no heat, no nothing. But this match is probably going to be a show stealer because Michael Elgin can do no wrong. And then Marafuji, when I, I've said this before many times on the channel, I saw him live against Donovan Dijak at a ro uh, local show. Best match I've ever seen live. Let's talk Moose and Ken Shamrock. This is another one I'm really, 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 really looking forward to, but because Moose has been absolute gold in this. And when I said just a second ago that Marafuji isn't going to stick around on the tapings as a loser, the reason I say that is because I think Ken Shamrock loses this match. I'm pretty. I, I, there's no reason. I like Moose doing this like legend killer thing, you know, for lack of a better term. So he has to win these matches, and he has for the most part, except losing to Rhino. But um, for the most part, he's been winning. He benefits the most from winning this. Ken Shamrock is supposed to be on the following set of tapings. Um, he can't. <sighs> My opinion, watching this last week of Impact, I've heard this guy can bump like he's in his 20s. He looked old to me in the ring when he was putting the ankle lock on Moose and everything. I didn't feel like he looked like he was moving around very well. So I'm not sure what to expect from the match itself, but the build to the match and the heat has been so phenomenal. That's why I'm looking forward to it. And everything Moose has done has been so good, so good. So I'm looking forward to this one quite a bit. But uh, definitely got Moose winning the thing. And hopefully the match itself is good. Because the last Bound for Glory, you know, Moose was with Cross against Dreamer and Eddie Edwards. I thought that match got a huge thumbs down. And then even his slam reversary with RVD, that match wasn't, wasn't all that. So... And then if you think about for Glory, the cage match with King Mo and, and Moose, I mean, uh, Lashley and Stefan Bonner, I mean, that wasn't that good of a match either. But Moose himself delivers as a competitor, as a performer. 
and he may have to carry this match a little, but it should be it should be fun. It should be a good one. Knockouts Championship. So this is what I've been waiting. I woke up to a, a rumor this morning that it's it's not highly reported, but that Ty Valkyrie could be done after Bound for Glory. Now she's done the video packages for Access TV. She even did an interview, say, you know, hyping up Impact and being a part of the Knockouts division, making it sound like she's going to be there long term. But Johnny Impact did the same thing right before Slammiversary, and he's gone. So I, I did wake up to the rumor that Ty's last match is going to be a Bound for Glory. Um, so this is weird because we don't know Tennille Dashwood's status. I've also said Tennille's been not not been a good pickup. I mean, she she is, but she's not performing. She's she's not showing what they pay her to do. And I, I do think she has to turn heel in order for that to happen. I don't know what to expect out of this match because even though Tennille hasn't looked good, usually with Taya she can make people look a little better. So I don't know I don't know what to expect from the match itself. Because if you look at, you know, wrestling Madison Rain, her and, and Tennille, neither of them hit hard. Taya hits hard. So so the match should be better, should look more real. You know, she shouldn't be... The way we saw Madison and Kira carrying the match with Tennille, hopefully it doesn't look like that with Taya. And um, I don't think Tennille's doing a good job as building sympathy as a babyface. But she doesn't have the facial expressions in the ring to be a babyface. Yeah, her promos aren't good enough for that so I think they have to turn her heel uh, but despite seeing the rumor I, I think Tessa I got Tessa winning I got I mean not Tessa uh, Ty Valkyrie winning I know the safe money is probably on Tennille winning but I got Ty winning um, I don't think but the longest reigning knockouts champion I don't know if she should drop it on an episode of Impact you know what I mean on, on a taped episode so this one's a this one's tough to call. My gut probably says Tennille's gonna win, but I I I'm gonna pretend I didn't see the rumor because it's not reported anywhere else, and I'm just gonna say Ty Valkyrie wins this thing. Uh, but when she does drop the title, I think she'll be gone because you heard me say with LAX, what else can they do when you're the longest reigning knockouts champion? There's not much else you can do at that point. That's that, you know maybe as a fan we enjoy watching, but self-satisfying for her, you know she probably wants another um, opportunity. And the rumor is it's not AEW that it's it's going to be NXT for Ty Valkyrie. The main event. This has been the best thing built on the show by far. I've been a fan of everything they were doing with, with Melissa and the wedding. The wedding was the shit. It was entertaining as hell. Um, big fan of it. It's time to put the title on Sammy. I know this hasn't been a good Brian Cage title run, but rather than see him hold on to the title, I'd like to see him drop the title and and try to get it back, you know, and maybe we'll get that title run out of him. I think Brian Cage is right now here for the long haul. I don't think he's, he's looking to like take off anytime soon. So I think, you know, get, get him the opportunity to chase and win it back. Uh, th this was something I think they dropped the ball with with EC3 when he, he lost the title. They never got him, gave him a fair chance to win it back. He should have won it at Bound for Glory versus Lashley because when he didn't, they didn't know how to book him after that. He went downhill. So I think Brian Cage has to have the opportunity to drop the title and then to like legitimately win it back and get that moment and get the run that he wants. Sammy Callahan has, do has done everything to deserve being the champion. And maybe all this OBE losing as a smokescreen for him winning the world title. Because if he loses, as much as OBE has been losing, how the hell are you going to fix that? That's going to be a tough one. I've got Dave Chris coming on the B-side soon. And I'm going to be talking to him about OBE and Impact Wrestling and all that good stuff. So hope you guys look forward to that one. But I think Sammy Callahan's going to win this thing. I think he's going to be the world champion. And I think he's going to have one of the most entertaining... This is what I've been saying. When he eventually wins a title, it's going to be one of the most entertaining runs. And going into Access TV, I think they're going to go to Access TV with Sammy Callahan, who, who probably technically is the bigger star than Brian Cage. It, it d depends on how you look at it, you know. But uh, I, think, I think Sammy's going to be the guy... And Moose deserves to be in this world title picture sooner than later, but I, I think Sammy's going to do it. I think he's going to be the guy. I think he's going to win. And Impact's never been afraid to go off the air with with a heel. 
So that is it for me. Thanks for uh, rolling with the punches for the B-side this week. Uh, did things a little bit differently. And I'm going to get back to podcast audio format so that I can you know, also put the podcast on my streaming platforms. But thanks for checking it out. Um, Bound for Glory should be a good show. We just have to block out the build, block out the fact that most of the matches have no that mean nothing and, and or have nothing behind no meat behind them you know there's only two or three matches that have some real fucking juice to them um but they just i don't know they always seem to do this for bound for glory so uh the, the trend continues but uh the show itself should be good as i said i'll most likely be watching it with you guys on pay-per-view hopefully not but um military mission first and i'm okay with that so thanks for checking out the b-side i'll talk to you guys soon peace